I'm Peter Michelson, Chair of Physics here at Stanford, and on behalf of the university, I'd like to welcome you all to this Breakthrough Discuss workshop. I think I was prepared some remarks, but I'm going to deviate from them a little bit. Uh, but first, I was going to thank Yuri, but Yuri's busy right now, so he's not quite here yet. But I think we should all thank Yuri Milner for his vision and his commitment to really address important problems that when you first look at them, you think, my God, how are you ever going to do that? Uh, and I think uh, that's an important spirit to have in doing basic breakthrough science. Uh, so we should uh, thank Yuri for that vision and commitment uh, and sustaining it to address problems in, in science that has global significance. So let's give a round of applause for Yuri. Thanks. Uh, so I think it's important to realize that you know this symposium today and tomorrow is part of what I would consider the exploration and our learning, our global understanding of the universe. And this is one aspect of it that we're talking about today. And I think this undertaking to explore and understand the universe is something that in this modern era, the 21st century, is something that will transcend national boundaries and it belongs to all humanity. And I think that's an important goal. That's for me, one of the reasons to do this, in addition to finding answers to fundamental questions. And I think this wondering about the origin, extent, and evolution of the universe, it's as old as human civilization. And, but it's only been during the 20th century that the study of the universe has been transformed from something that's primarily metaphysical and theological speculation, and sometimes driven by ideology, and it's become an observational, data-driven science. And I think we should all be very proud of that and contribute to that in any way we can. Uh, and this transformation is also important because it's transcending national boundaries, and I think that's very important. Uh, so anyway, astronomical observations in particular, they've often surprised us. Uh, and they've revealed, for example, the cosmic remnants of the birth of the universe and planets around stars. Uh, this explosion of knowledge about the universe is fueled by human curiosity and the desire for answers to questions such as, how did the universe begin? How is it going to end? Will it end? What's its ultimate fate? Why are we here? And today, uh, we're going to look at are we alone? Uh, and this has only been possible to undertake this mission because of revolutions in technology that have allowed us to see the cosmos across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. And now, in fact, we can hear, we can even listen to the universe with gravitational radiation. So from the dawn of the space age in the 1960s, contemporary astronomical discoveries have both advanced our understanding and, and also stimulated the imagination of people around the globe. These endeavors have had profound cultural reverberations across national boundaries and disciplinary boundaries. So as we begin this breakthrough discussion today, focused on how we can answer the question, are we alone, I'd like to recall an observation made by President Ronald Reagan after a summit meeting with General Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev in October 1986. And that was a meeting that eventually led to the Intermediate Range Nuclear Force Treaty in 1987. So I'll just play a short video of this, if I can figure out how this works. Ah, here we go. Whoops, something didn't work. Secure for you what did I do and your children. I couldn't help at one point in my discussions with, privately with General Secretary Gorbachev, when you stop to think that we're all God's children wherever we may live in the world, I couldn't help but say to him, just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet uh, outside in the universe. 
We'd forget all the little local differences that we have between our countries, and we would find out once and for all that we really are all human beings here on this earth. So I think I agree with President Reagan uh, in, in that sentiment, but we certainly hope when we find an alien civilization somewhere that we'll, we'll know how to communicate in a friendly way. Uh, so finally, let me just conclude with this last slide that I'll show you, which is more contemporary, and I'll let you read it, uh, but these were words uh, uttered by Vice, then Vice President of China, Xi Jinping, when he opened the 28th General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union uh, in 2012. Thanks. Uh, good morning. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm uh, Pete Warden, the chairman of the Breakthrough Prize Foundation and executive director of the Breakthrough Initiatives. Uh, I'd like to really welcome you uh, here. This is a very exciting event. Uh, uh, some of you might have noted earlier this week that the foundation had some other announcement. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, the, uh, as well. Uh, but uh, the topics this morning were chosen very specifically in mind of a, of a broad study for life in the universe. Uh, and the, the, I, I think the, there are two or three key points to that. Uh, of course, one is, is there life anywhere off the planet? And we're very interested in that. And uh, uh, you'll hear a, a lot of discussion about that today. Uh, second, is there intelligent life anywhere in, in the universe? Uh, and by the way, that's an interesting thing because although we're just now beginning to get the ability to, to search uh, even our own solar system and, and hopefully soon the nearest solar systems for life, that uh, we have an assumption that an intelligent species would make its presence known through its technology at much larger distances, uh, particularly in light of our idea of how we you know, might send small probes to the nearest stars uh, using very powerful lasers. So. Uh, one of the topics here has been, uh, you know, can we detect such lasers? Uh, the, the, uh, the other topic uh, that we've looked at is uh, you know, about the nearest star. You'll hear more about the nearest star uh, in this session, uh, the Alpha Centauri system. Uh, so another main question is, is there anything there that's interesting and how can we study it? Uh, of course, the final question is that in light of the ability to kind of send stuff uh, interstellar distances, uh, are there intermediate things that are interesting? Uh, and I, I was talking to Lou Friedman here a little early, earlier, and he said about two years ago they did a little study where they talked about the gravity lens point. And he said people thought that was absurd. You mean you're going to send things 500 to 1,000 astronomical units out? And, and uh, you know, so we're point is we're going to go further. So that's a good milestone. Uh, but at any rate, uh, these uh, three topics, uh, uh, particularly the, uh, and the third one to look at you know, the gravity lens point for the sun, which I think is particularly relevant in light of the recent gravity wave events that are discoveries that, uh, that this university and its uh, colleagues around the world have, have done. Uh, very interesting set of, of, uh, of topics. So uh, I hope that you'll enjoy this discussion. This is our first annual Breakthrough Discuss conference. We'll, we hope to have uh, an annual conference about these questions of life in the universe and we hope that you'll all enjoy this one and find it scientifically rewarding and, uh, and attend the, the follow-on ones. Uh, finally, I'd like to give some, some thanks to the people that made this possible. First and foremost, of course, is Stanford University, the Department of Physics, and, and Peter Michelson. Uh, I know there was significant work that went into this, uh, and I really want to th thank the department. Second is our, our sponsor, uh, the Breakthrough Prize Foundation, and particularly the Breakthrough Initiatives. Uh, as noted, uh, Yuri Milner uh, is, uh, is uh, the, the, one of the leaders there, but also on the Breakthrough Initiatives, we have two other uh, board members that have now agreed to serve and, and work with us. Uh, you might have heard of them. One of them is uh, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, and the other one is Stephen Hawking. So uh, uh, we're really proud to have really top-level uh, 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 board, uh, board members. Uh, and now particularly, I know a lot of the real work was done by people that, that don't get thanked very often. Uh, the facilitators, uh, uh, some of those were noted already, were Andrew Henry, Jasper Wolf, 
Oriol Tinta Gazur, uh, James Skalkfake, and Luke Itziak. Uh, and the organizers are Claire Burgess, who you'll see around here somewhere, uh, Barb Hoverstein, uh, Lauren uh, Ferrigno, and Jamie Drew. So I'd like to give all of them a, a hearty round of applause and, and thank them. Now I'd uh, also like to introduce our, our first, uh, our, our first uh, talk here, our keynote address. Uh, it is really my great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Avi Loeb. Uh, his full bio is in, the, uh, is in the program. Now we couldn't possibly put the full bio in there, so just a few highlights. Uh, he's the Frank uh, B. Baird uh, Professor of Science at Harvard University uh, and the chair of the Harvard Astronomy Department. Uh, and the director of the Institute for Theory and Computation, uh, and uh, the director uh, of the Black Hole Initiative at Harvard. Uh, I also would like to note that uh, that Avi is is one of our leaders in the in the in the Breakthrough Starshot Initiative and the other initiatives we have. So, without further ado, uh, Avi, I think you're around somewhere. Uh -huh. 